Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. We're going to go into one of the most annoying things that can happen when you're building a WordPress website and you go and refresh the page and the change that you just made is not appearing on the front end. It's usually due to this feature called caching. If you've been building websites for a while, you've definitely heard of this. If you're a beginner, it might be new to you. So I want to quickly go through it. I'll explain this graphic that you're seeing right here. And then we'll talk about ways that you can clear the cache so you can view all the changes that you're making to your website. Now this is a really basic representation of what cache is. So if you're building a WordPress website, you may or may not know that WordPress is built with PHP and that's a scripting language. All of your content on the WordPress website is stored within a database. So when you open a browser like Google Chrome and you type in the website, you're going to load a PHP file. It's going to go through that scripting file and then within that file, it's going to access the database. Now this takes more time than it would if you were just loading a plain text file or a really simple website that didn't have a database attached to it. So all that caching does is it takes that output. All the output from PHP in the database is going to be output to HTML and CSS and that's what loads up in your browser. So the cache is really just a layer to store that HTML output so that the next time the user loads it, it's a lot quicker. With that said, there's a couple layers to caching because caching happens both on the front end and the back end. So that means there's browser caching and there's server side caching. So the first step that if you make a change and you don't see it on your website, the way that I like to do this is go into Google Chrome, just right click and hit the inspect button. And when you have the inspector open like this, you can click and hold the refresh button and you'll see this menu pop up normal reload hard reload or empty cache and hard reload so this is what you're going to want to do to clear the browser cache on the front end a lot of times this is all it takes to get that change to appear on your website now if that doesn't work that's when you're going to need to get into server side caching if you're an experienced user with WordPress, you've probably installed a caching plugin before. So that's what you got to do. You got to go into your WordPress dashboard and find out where you can clear the cache there. So on this particular installation, my website is hosted with SiteGround and SiteGround has their own performance plugin called the SG Optimizer. You can see up here with that SG Optimizer installed, there's a little button called Purge SG Cache. So that's the next step. You want to go ahead and clear the backend cache and I have my other blog hosted with Kinsta. They have a must use plugin to control their cache. So this might depend on your hosting company. Some hosting companies have their own performance plugins. This is the Kinsta cache page where I can clear it either here from this big purple button or this button up here. And if you have shared hosting, chances are you may have installed a plugin like W3 Total Cache or I think WP Super Cache is another popular one. If you go into the settings page on those plugins, they're gonna likely have a clear cache button somewhere on there. And likewise, I use another plugin on this website called Auto Optimize, and this just combines files, minifies them. This also has a cache where it takes all those separate files and combines them into one through this Auto Optimize plugin. So you can hover over this and hit the delete cache button here. So those are the steps that you'll wanna take to delete the cache through your WordPress admin. I just had an issue with a Divi website that I built. I had to go through these steps and it still didn't work. The thing that did work for me was going into my SiteGround backend over here to the speed caching page through the site tools. And I had to go into the dynamic cache down here and click the flush cache button. If you are on shared hosting, I have a video where I went through W3 total cache and auto optimize so you can speed up your website. I'll link that up here in the top right if you wanna check it out. And I want to go through one more thing, and that is CSS. I can't tell you how many times I've made a change with CSS code and it didn't appear on the front end. Sometimes it is a caching issue, but if you've gone through all of these steps and it's not caching, it's likely a CSS hierarchy issue. You can have multiple declarations for an element on CSS, and sometimes one of them takes precedence over the other. So my checklist for fixing this is very simple. The first thing you want to do is make sure that it's the last statement. So if you go into any element, you know, you inspect it on the front end. I'm just going to click the H3 here. So this is H3 class entry title. If you go over to the right side here, this is going to show you all the CSS properties that are applied to this element. And obviously we have multiple CSS properties. We have CSS defined for the H3. We have it for the entry title class. And some of these take precedence over the others. So the first thing you want to do is see where the highest precedent CSS statement is. 
And in this case, it's the entry title. Now, the cool thing about WordPress nowadays is that you can add CSS over here under the appearance customize section. They have a little option at the bottom, additional CSS. And this is loaded in the head as the last statement. So if you put any CSS in here, that's usually going to override any CSS that's within the theme template files or elsewhere. Now, if you do have a CSS statement in here and it's not working, like say for instance, over here, you put in CSS within that additional customized section for the H3 element. Because this isn't the highest precedence showing on the inspector, you may actually need to change that to whatever the selector is here. So I always just copy the highest level selector that's showing the CSS. So in this case, if I wanted to change the CSS for the entry title, I would just go ahead and copy this highest level selector and add it over here and then write my CSS within the brackets. What I noticed with CSS is a lot of times you might have issues with descendant files. So if you were targeting something within this entry title, you know, like entry title A, if you try to apply the CSS just to the anchor element or whatever that descendant element is, but you didn't include the parent element, the CSS oftentimes doesn't show. So that's why I love going into Google Chrome Inspector and just copying and pasting whatever that highest precedence element is. And if all else fails, let me just copy and paste this as an example into here. You can throw in right after your CSS declaration, the exclamation important tag, and that just overrides any of the previous CSS statements that don't have that important tag. So that's kind of a way to hijack the precedents with multiple CSS statements that are scattered throughout a couple different files. So that's all I got for this video. If you're not seeing the changes that you made to your WordPress website, I hope that going through some of these steps fixes that for you. If you got experience with building and customizing WordPress websites and you like to make money freelancing with that skill, go to my homepage, websiteprofitcourse.com. You can download a free giveaway, 15 tools to start your web design business. Chances are, if you made it to the end of this video, you are a more experienced user with WordPress and you'd like to learn more. But even if you're a beginner, I highly recommend you go through my free WordPress training. You can access that if you go to websiteprofitcourse.com slash WP101. That's going to give you a full tour of the admin area that we were just looking at. And both of these links I'll include in the description below along with a few others. Last but not least, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more WordPress and web design videos. I view all of these little issues as challenges and yeah, sometimes they're frustrating, but that's really how you learn and get better at your skill. I'll link up a few other videos here if you'd like to keep learning. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch this one and I hope you join me on the next video.